welcome back to Musical Storytime here at DLR Lexicon together with Music Generation DLR. My name is Mila and I'm here with my friend Penny. Hello Penny. Hi Mila. Hi everyone. And we also have a very special guest, Eleanor. Hi everybody. Hi Mila. Hi Penny. It's nice to be back. It's nice to Hi, have Eleanor. you back. So today I have two stories for you. The first one is Sulwe, written by Lupita Nyong'o and illustrated by Vashti Harrison and it's published by Puffin Books. The other story is The Book Three by Paul Sajak and Rashin Kireya and it was published by Barefoot Books. So let's start with Sulwe. Can't wait. Sulwe, written by Lupita Nyong'o, illustrated by Vashti Harrison, published and performed with permission from Puffin Books. Sulwe was born the colour of midnight. She looked nothing like her family, not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the colour of dawn, Baba the colour of dusk, and Mitch her sister was the colour of high noon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Sulwe either. People gave her sister, Mitch, pet names like Sunshine and Ray and Beauty. People gave Sulwe names like Darkie and Night. Sulwe felt hurt every time. So she hid away while her sister made lots of friends. Sulwe dreamed of being the same colour as her sister. She wanted real friends too. So she got the biggest eraser she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. That hurt! She crept into Mama's room and held herself to her makeup. Oh no! She would hear about this from Mama. Sulwe decided to work from the inside out and ate only the lightest brightest foods. Can you tell me what she's eating? Yes, there's bananas and toast bread and mushrooms and milk. Do you think this will work? With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight. I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. <laughs> to wake her for school the next morning, Sulwe rose to find not a trace of daylight in her midnight skin. Sulwe told Mama everything. Mama asked, what is your name? Sulwe, she muttered, and what does it mean? Star, Sulwe whispered. Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are. As for beauty, Mama said, rubbing Sulwe's stomach the way she always did to comfort her. You are beautiful, Sulwe sighed. Well, you are beautiful to me. 
but you can't rely on what you look like to make you feel beautiful, my sweet. Real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you. Now, off you get and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? How could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared at Sulway's window. Deny sent me, said the star. Come with me. Sulway hopped on to the star and off they went. <laughs> beginning of time, said the star. There was night and day, and they were sisters. They loved each other very much, but people didn't treat the sisters the same. People gave day pet names like lovely and nice and pretty. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Well, night got fed up and walked right off the earth. They stayed behind and enjoyed making everybody happy in the sun. But then, day grew too long. Day began to really, mi really miss her sister. So did everybody else. There had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find night. And she did. I miss you, said Day. I miss you too, said Night. But you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, Day replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. Night returned and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in. Brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colours. And some light can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night everything had a silver sheen, elegant and fine. <laughs> sister. When you are darkest is when you are most beautiful. It's when you are most you. Could it be that night did not need to change? Not even a little. Not even at all. Now that day and night were back together, a little bit of night returned to day in the form of shadows. And a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other, whether people chose to see it or not. <laughs> both on 
their sunniest day and their di darkest night and every shade in between. Together they make the world we know, light and dark, strong and beautiful. <laughs> rose the next morning, beaming. There would be no hiding any more. She belonged out in the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong. And if she ever needed a reminder of her brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. Sulwe felt beautiful inside and out. And that was Sulwe. So, Penny, what did you think? I thought it was lovely, Leela. I loved how when Sulwe went on a magical adventure with the shooting star through the night. How about you? Oh, that was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah. Magical. I think, very. I think my favourite part was when she realised that she's beautiful just as she is, you know? Oh, that was lovely. It was, wasn't it? Okay, how about time for our second story? Are you ready, Penny? Yeah, what's it about, Mila? Let's see. The Book Tree, written by Paul Sajak, illustrated by Rashin Kariya, published and read with permission from Barefoot Books. <laughs> Nestled in, a bran in the branches of a tree, Arlo opened his book and breathed in. Beginnings were always the best part. They smelled as if anything were possible. <gasps> I'm sorry, Mayor. I got lost in my book and it slipped. Preposterous. Books are dangerous. I don't trust them. They act like seeds which grew into an ideas and ideas turn into questions. I will tell you what you need to know. <laughs> First, the mayor gathered every book in the library and then every book in the whole town. He tore them up until all that was left was a single page that floated away in a passing breeze. Arlo chased the page as it blew across town. It reminded him of a dandelion seed drifting on a wish. When it landed, the muddy earth swallowed it letter by letter until it too was gone. Arlo thought that perhaps the mayor was right. After all, he had been elected mayor. He must know something, but without books. Arlo noticed changes wherever he looked. At schools, teachers had nothing to read, so story time became nap time. Without cookbooks, restaurants served only dry cereal. No one went to the theatre, since actors had nothing to act out. And the place Arlo loved most, the library. All the shelves were empty. Arlo sat where the last page was buried. He missed the crack and creak of a book's spine the first time you open it. He longed for the smell and the crisp texture, texture of a book's pages. But most of all, he missed getting lost in an epic adventure. Sadly, Arlo scratched two words into the dirt. The end. 
endings were the worst part of any book. But as he stared at the words, they grew into an idea. Arlo sat with his pencil and paper and let his ideas flow. And can you tell me what his ideas were? Yes, there's a car with feathers and a red frog and a lady in a strawberry dress with a teapot on her head. Do you want to see what other ideas he had? All right, let's turn the page. He read his stories out loud to anyone who passed by, but no one stopped to listen. Then Arlo heard something, a sound he thought he'd never hear again, that familiar crack and creak. When Arlo looked for the source of the sound, he saw a sprout springing from where the page had been buried. It began to open its leaves. It reached for Arlo's words, begging for more. With every story Arlo wrote and read aloud, the sprout grew. Arlo wrote a story about a giant, and the tree grew tall, stretching for the clouds. He wrote about a fire-breathing beast, and its branches became as strong as dragon's claws. He wrote about a magical swan made of paper, and blooms of tissue paper blossomed into books. When the books were ripe, Arlo climbed into the branches of the book tree and breathed deeply, enjoying the fruits of his harvest. While Arlo read, a friend stopped under the tree. I'm bored, there's nothing to do. You could try reading, Arlo said. Is that a book? Yep, here, I love this story, Arlo said, giving her a hand up into the tree. The two shared the shady spot. Soon, flocks of readers roosted on the limbs. Books spread through the town like pollen in the wind. People grew hungry for reading again. Some wrote their own stories and became book gardeners themselves. Fiery maples bloomed with picture books, willows wept with poetry, and fruit trees filled with cookbooks flourished. As the trees grew, the town blossomed. <laughs> lost in his mayoral work, was oblivious to all the changes. That is, until a ripe book fell on his head. The mayor kicked and stomped. Who planted these trees? You did, sir, Arlo said. When you tore up the books, it planted an idea. Impossible. This is the second time my head is hurting because of a book. The trees have to be cut down. But we've become a town of books and stories. You can't cut them down. The mayor walked the streets of the town. He gorged himself at one of the five-star restaurants, caught a show in the park and lost himself in a story about a boy fishing for a whale in a puddle. <laughs> all of this? The mayor asked, astonished. No, Arlo said, as he handed the mayor a freshly picked story. The book was just the seed.
And that was the book tree. Mila, do you know what? What? Do you think a book tree might grow here? From the ideas that we just read? Yeah, from the stories we just read today. I don't know, that would be brilliant, oh. wouldn't wow. it? Yeah, because in the story wasn't the book, the story was a seed. So maybe, you know, a tree might grow here. Exactly, and maybe you should write your own story and feed the tree. I love to, I love writing and reading. I, do you think I could write a story about penguins? I think you definitely could write a story about penguins, Penny. Oh, definitely going to do that, Mila. Okay, I'm looking Can't forward wait. to hearing about it. Can't wait. I'm going to write one now. All right. Well, and that is all we have time for today. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you, Penny, for being here with me. And thank you, Eleanor. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great to be here. Well... I'm going to say goodbye and Eleanor is going to play us a wonderful piece of music, The Sleeping Beauty Waltz. Bye! Bye! <laughs>